Okay, Graham. So, Marcus, you It's been, been a little time. Yeah, you've been busy, huh? Yeah, sorry. You came by here last week and I wasn't here. <laughs> I was, <laughs> he was in I was Wisconsin? walking around Milwaukee. Yeah, I was in downtown <laughs> okay. Milwaukee looking at old German architecture. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Well, sometimes that's what you got to go do, right? Yeah. yeah. I was out there for the Grid Life finale. Oh, right, right. GLTC finale, the last Grid Life of the year. So Fun. Cool. Did you have a good time? Uh, I did. <laughs> You're like, let me check. Yeah, no, I did. I had a good time just being a spectator. I sponsored two of the drivers. Nice. So I like to take those kinds of opportunities to not do any work. Yeah. But I did bring, uh, you know, when... When you're sponsoring the deal, then people kind of do stuff for you. Like, you don't really have to do anything. It's like you're not on the job. (laughs) Um, But I don't know. I guess it would be nice to be there in more of an interactive capacity, Mm -hmm. I guess. But you know what? I just don't like having a booth. That's the thing. I think that's the main thing. I don't like having a business presence Mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in that sense. Yeah. Like, I like my branding there. And I like to be available to talk to people, but I, I just don't really enjoy having a booth. Well, I'd imagine it's a lot more legwork and it's a lot more just time, right? It's a ton of bullshit. Yeah. It, it's just a ton of work. It is a lot of time. Now, the face-to-face that you get with people is, is really valuable. It mm-hmm. is. I'm just constantly always battling between, is it worthwhile? or not that makes sense yeah i mean that's like any trade show or expo it's like some of the times you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs and other it's times you're like just money uh, yeah other times you're like oh this was great i met this person i got this deal or whatever yep. but it's so because if i trace things back so many like positive things have come out of yeah. doing like these types of events like mm-hmm. people that i've met that i didn't really know yeah networking and stuff yeah yeah uh so going to the events is good i just have to find the right mix balance maybe yeah. i just need to have a booth but somebody else mans it or probably something, but probably yeah you know, i well, don't know well tell me about your drivers what are they driving what are okay names? so um eric cotille uh i've been sponsoring for three years now actually two cool. two and a half years at least we've been on his car i was primary sponsor for the first two years of that and then hybrid racing took over primary branding on the car so we're like a supporting nice brand um but you know now it's the hybrid racing car, so I don't really get to claim it quite as yeah yeah it's, as not, it's well. not my car anymore. yeah but you know what hybrid racing is a big brand for us yeah. so you know whatever you know yeah. when, I, when I promote the car I get to promote you know both brands and what is the to, car it's a Civic EG hatchback um, it was a race car that Eric had bought mm-hmm. um, to do he was an SCCA race car driver and then moved to GLTC so he's just been developing this car. Cool. And one of the main attractions uh, to him is that he does all of this work on his own. And if you follow wow. uh, on Instagram, uh, his stories and his posts and things, he does. he's constantly working on this. His name is Eric? Eric Coutil, Coutil. K-U-T-I-L. Okay. Yeah. His Instagram is Eric Coutil Racing with uh, some underscores in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll put um, it on screen. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. He... Uh, <laughs> He puts a lot of work and time and energy and he just, you could tell that he loves the car, he loves to drive, he loves to work on it. Just everything about it is so inspirational for people. Awesome. And we noticed this right away because he was using one of our fast line shifters mm-hmm. early on and doing, just doing really amazing things behind the wheel. So, you know, he got my attention and I reached out and sponsored him. And he's been doing really, really, really well. Last year he was the uh, uh, champion for the whole awesome. season. Uh, And this year, he was very, very close. Uh, An unfortunate incident resulted in him crashing Mm. in the last race where Um, he he was in a winning position. position. He would have won. I think he would have won the championship possibly if he hadn't crashed. Mm. But insult to injury, A, you don't win the race. B, you don't win the championship. And C... Oh, now your car is totaled. Yeah. Yeah. So the car, the the chassis um, is, is... a goner a bit hammered yeah yeah. so it's a good thing he likes working on it right yeah yeah Yeah, i guess it is a good thing so you know new beginnings i suppose yeah Yeah. Uh, he's talking about doing a four-door we think maybe a four-door eg but i don't know i'm just watching the instagram along with other folks so it'll be interesting to see what he comes up with and you know we're still sponsoring him and 
Cool. Um, you know, be happy to be part of that project for next year. Nice. And uh, the second driver mm -hmm. is Tom O'Gorman. And uh, I've known Tom for a number of years, at least at least five, maybe six years. Okay. Yeah, I think it's probably six years now. Um, so he's kind of come up through a grassroots um, level, just sort of a self-taught, self-funded okay. race car driver. He nice. did have a GoFundMe to get into uh, touring car okay. racing. So he was with Pirelli World Challenge for a few years and um, was with another team that we sponsored in the past, Shea Racing. Mm -hmm. So he was driving one of their, uh, one of their, a car branded under their livery. It was a 2016 Civic, okay. the Turbo Civic when it first came oh, out. Oh, so yeah, it's a much newer car then. Yeah, so he <laughs> raced that at Thunder Hill, and then he did that in World Challenge, and then uh, he had uh, done some other pro racing things for a couple of years, but with COVID, like a lot of things dried up, and yeah. he didn't have a ride, so he ended up buying a car, mm -hmm. uh, an S2000, oh, nice. and he ran it for, I think, the last third of the season or last half of it. Uh, the car needed a lot of work, mm -hmm. but... Uh, he just developed it. We provided some parts, um, car seps parts and whatever, uh, to get that thing on, on the track. He did a K swap in it after the engine blew up. <laughs> like a 24? K24. Nice. He, his standard engine blew up towards the end of last yeah. year and then he needed to put a K series in it. So, yeah. Well, he needed to put a new engine. Yeah, and the F series are expensive. And the F series yeah. is expensive and I don't want to say prone to blowing up, but. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe... The, the, they're all kind of blowing up potentially on the track. So <laughs> yeah. we went with a K-Swap and... Um, I was always curious about those. I thought that was he, such a neat idea. He did blow up the K-Series too. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, quick quick yeah. change on it. Yeah. So um, the team that he's with is uh, ASM. They're out of Plover, Wisconsin. So I got to see his shop too, uh, cool. Andy Smedgard. And um, yeah, so anyway, Tom's been running hard all year long. Um, he had a few tough breaks, uh, and it ended up that he, I think, came in fourth in the championship. And uh, he was actually practicing for this um, Road America race. Mm -hmm. A week before the race, he was out testing a low drag setup. It's a high-speed track, mm -hmm. so you run low drag. And he'd gotten a few laps in that were really good, and then one. Mm. He spin and, out, or? Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened. You know, it was just a, a test day, so I don't, I didn't get a visual yeah. of it. But the front and the rear end of that car got trashed. So he was in a borrowed car for this Road America race. It didn't have the heel toe livery on it. Okay. But I did sneak a couple of stickers on there, and he did really well throughout the weekend. Uh, and his stats for the series were really, really good. It's just he didn't come away with a podium at the championship, which would have been nice. Yeah. Um, he would have really needed a miracle to happen in order not to 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 win the championship. But yeah. you know, he is a really great driver and a really solid guy, and I think he knows the business really well too. So we're continuing to work with Tom. We got to get him a new car. We've got a few ideas kicking around. Um, some of them more ambitious than others. Sure, but uh, <laughs> more to come on the uh, on that. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's who we were out right now. I also checked out. I um, uh, met up with Peter Cunningham. Okay. Who's also in the area mm -hmm. and uh, checked out the real time collection hall. Awesome. And um, so that was kind of neat uh, hanging out with Peter in his home turf. I've seen him a few, few places and mm -hmm. we've gotten to know each other fairly well over a number of years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was kind of neat to see cool. where he's at. Maybe one day he'll come out here again. I don't know. Yeah. Nice. So, so, I mean, that sounds like a good little getaway. It was. There was yeah. a lot of stuff going on and I had um, the heel toe branding up in the paddock. And cool. uh, along with hybrid racing, Haltech was there. Hawk Performance was there. Nice. Uh, all great, um, all great people to. It's got to feel good with. to see your brand next to all these other brands, yeah. Yeah, and actually, somebody was saying, somebody was uh, mentioning to me uh, what the value was in sponsoring these cars, mm -hmm. and you know, much like a lot of other marketing things, it, it kind of feels like mm -hmm. you're chucking money away. Sure. But that's where mm -hmm. you want to align with people who. A, have some kind of a following, mm -hmm. right? Um, but more important than how big the following is, is who's following them, Yeah. right? The people that follow Eric Coutille are DIYers. They're grassroots racers, but they're also people that just really enjoy watching cars being built. They enjoy um, Hondas, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and, they're, and they're sometimes shade tree people or people that just like the spectacle of somebody doing some crazy stuff that they can't do. Yeah. Right, so 
Uh, Eric is an inspirational person, and that's kind of what we want Heel Toe to be. We want Heel Toe to be a place where you can see possibilities, the things you could do. Yeah. Encourage people to do things on their own. Give them some support mm -hmm. so that they can, um, you know, get those DIY projects done on their own. Or know how to navigate mm -hmm. working with an installer mm -hmm. or a shop or something like that. Yeah, well, and you've given plenty of tips to that extent, too. The audience, yeah, um, both about the parts, about cars, and I think you've been very encouraging too. That That's like, what we try to do, yeah. you know. Um, it, it's even come to my realization that fixing up my own cars, which isn't something that I do a ton of, mm -hmm. but fixing up my own cars is important too because it inspires people yeah. to get out and, you know, have a dream about their car and, mm -hmm. and work on it. Well, I know that, like, for me at least, you know, the very first things I did on a car were just, like, really rinky-dink, tiny little cosmetic things. Because yeah. it freaked me out taking, like, an exhaust component yeah. or something like that. But then when you do it once or you do it twice or you do it with brakes once, because, you know, especially, like, something like brakes, you're like, oh, my God, if I screw this up, I'm going to be dead on the side of the road in a fiery crash. But then you look at how simple it is to actually do a brake job and you kind of go, oh. This well, is so stupid easy. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, invariably it's going to give you a hard time at yeah, some point. Yeah. And so then, you know, mm -hmm. you work through it. Mm -hmm. You just be mechanical about it. Yeah. Right? Well, and hopefully you look on the internet, you know, and you yeah. look at how have other people solved these Some problems. YouTube's or, yeah. or, or, you know, like I'm, I'm on call on the weekends, right? People yeah. text me all weekend long. And, and this is something about the industry that's pretty annoying is that <laughs> the aftermarket automotive parts stores are always freaking closed on the weekends. Yeah. Like, I've had that happen so many times. Now, I'm closed on the weekend too. I don't ship anything. I mm -hmm. generally am not answering emails. I'm not processing orders. Uh, you know, I'm really not helping like the daily business. Sure. Right. But the phone is active, text is available, people message me on Facebook, Instagram, and it's all me. Answering all the messages. Yeah, um, that's, that's something I you hope know, you guys know. It's Marcus. Yeah, I know. It's and not so, just some call center. Some somewhere. of y'all aren't too shy about sending messages either, <laughs> which is fine, right? And I answer them all. I'm, I'm always caught up with my texts. Mm -hmm. I'm always caught up with my messages as well as I can be, right? But that's exactly when I shipped somebody a product, mm -hmm. you know, or the team shipped somebody a product during the week. They got it in time for the weekend, yep. which is a big goal of ours. Yeah. And then, oops, something's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. You know, of course I can't fix it right now. Yeah. But they just want to let us know, get some reassurance. Mm -hmm. Here's how to report it. You know. Yeah, what's going to happen et next. Et cetera. What's yeah. going to happen this coming yeah. week, we'll take care of it. Right? Mm -hmm. And the pressure's off. Right? It actually makes it so that the Mondays are a little bit more freed up to handle the new orders and things that have come in from over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have to deal with all these problems that we didn't know about surprises. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, of course, if you run into a problem on Saturday afternoon, yeah. by the time Monday morning rolls around, mm -hmm. you're like, come on, yeah, let's, let's do it. Do so, this. Come on. Anyway, I understand all this. So, yeah. you know, the, the plight of the DIY person, you know, the nature of it is you're on the weekend. And so anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, coming back full around. Yeah. Try to encourage people to do things on their own. Definitely. And uh, Eric is one of these people that just projects like I can do this mm -hmm. like he can do more than most people can do yeah yeah but he just pulls out his welder and welds a thing and he goes yeah. that ain't a pretty weld but it's gonna hold and I think that that's important you yeah. know people need to know that just because you know there's all this uh, glitz and glamour of getting things done to your mm -hmm. car on the internet like not everything has to be like high-end fabrication yeah like good is good yeah well, you were making that point to me uh, in the last video that we did like this about my car's paint job. You were like, well, what are you going to use the car for? And it's funny because, like, I think for me, you know, my upbringing in the car world was very much just kind of self-taught. It was just whatever I found on the Internet. And you get this impression when you're looking at car builds on the Internet that when someone has successfully built a car, it is perfect. It is literally perfect. Like you could, yeah. you could eat off of it. Yeah. And they race it, and they drag it, and they fly it around the moon. You know, in and a three-inch square carship. photo yeah. on Instagram, yep. it looks amazing. Yeah. You go, man, this is nuts. This makes 900 horsepower, <laughs> and it's clean as a whistle, yeah. and it's just like so wild. Yeah. But then, yeah, when you actually spend some time around the people who do this stuff, there's bug guts all over them. There's rock chips everywhere, and like it's a healthy reminder to say to yourself. Well, what am I going to use it for, though? You know? Yeah. You yeah. know, um, 
it, and opposite of that point, if it doesn't have bug guts and stuff <laughs> yeah. and, and rock chips, yeah. it's perfect, which means it doesn't ever get driven. Right, yeah. Right? right. They maybe get driven to shows. Mm -hmm. Or even right. trailers. And so then they might have 900 horsepower on a dyno, yeah. but it is not drivable horsepower. Yeah. If you drove this car farther than to the show, <laughs> <laughs> you're probably yeah. going to have a problem. Yeah, you do a couple of drag passes and you might feel a little differently about how yeah. finished the so car is. So in reality, you yeah. like getting it done to the degree that it needs to be done yes. is important. That it needs to be done. Anyway, yeah. Eric always hits the mark with his nice. car. Well, it, I'm interested to look him up. It's highly developed, yeah, and he started cataloging some of his stories, um, I think. So Cool. But, I mean... If he had a YouTube, it would be doing really well, I yeah, imagine. But yeah. you know, it's it's difficult being the same guy right. photographing and working. You know, yeah. you do a lot of work, you know, single-handed or left-handed, <laughs> and it just doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> so, anything outside of a, a TLX carbon door uh, insert, yeah, you can't right. do single-handed. I was impressed by that. Yeah, you got I, that whole thing with one hand. I was surprised. If you haven't seen it, too. you should look it up. Yeah. Um, but Especially yeah. since I never taken that door off before, yeah. and it just—I assumed that there was going to be more back there <laughs> but than, than there was because no. I could have never done that with, you know, like I said, an older Honda. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, yeah. well, that that brings me, I think, to kind of our our central discussion because we're talking about newer Acuras here, your, your, your TLX. Well, we are, but I didn't get to talk about Tom either. So oh, fair Tom, enough. fair enough. Tom's, um, I. I ended up with Tom because I wanted to be on his Civic at World Challenge, but mm -hmm. the World Challenge rules limit what you can actually do with the car. Mm. Um, so there was like a curated set of mods that were available for the car. Oh. And so I really couldn't provide anything. Gotcha. There was, there was a few pieces on the car that I could say that I sell, mm -hmm. but most of the stuff all has to come from HPD, which general public can't buy that stuff. Yeah. So the series kind of made it limiting for me. I, I want to sponsor Tom, but I need his car to be the avatar. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, people have to see the car out there winning with the branding on it. Yeah. And then, you know, that's what it, it, Tom is going to promote it, right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> he does a good job at promoting himself and the car, but it just didn't feel like there was a place for us. Well, once he got his own car... It changed. It was like, and I need to build this, and I kind of need to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, here, now is a perfect opportunity for me to help. Because yeah. Grid Life Touring uh, Cup, the way their rules are set up is it's basically unlimited what you could do with your car. That's nice. Mm -hmm. But there are power to weight mm. rules. So Like classes or whatever? No, or just it's all one class, but <clears throat> they make the cars such that their peak horsepower mm -hmm. and their weight have to be a ratio. certain ratio. Gotcha. And so, yeah. you know, depending on what the car weighs, that's how much horsepower you can have or mm -hmm. vice versa. So, and they do monitor, you have to submit dyno sheets before mm -hmm. you race and they weigh them after every uh, race. Well, that's probably you know, at least for a really good series to watch. Well, yeah. And then uh, you can add or remove aerodynamic elements and that allows you to alter that ratio a little bit. Yeah. Like you said to the track, you might want to customize it. Yeah. You, know? you might want to have a low <laughs> arrow set up mm -hmm. uh, for higher top speed. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but some cars make their power really low in the RPM range. Some make it higher up. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, V8, there's yeah. a, there's a Corvette. The Corvette dicing it up with an EG Civic and an S2000 <laughs> and a Porsche Cayman. Yeah. Right? Like, a Cayman GT4. Like, that's yeah. fucking balls out car. Right? But they're all duking it out. They're all within a second of each other. That's impressive. Yeah. It's extremely impressive to be able to get those cars balance and performance mm -hmm. in that way. But they still maintain their individual strengths and weaknesses yeah. of being mid-engine rear drive, front wheel drive, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, lightweight, you know, whatever, you know. So anyhow, um, uh, Tom was an attractive one for us because he is involved and he is professional in how he like puts out his stuff. And he has a, a pretty big following because he was in pro driving and he contributes to grassroots motorsports. Like, I don't think you could pick up a grassroots motorsports image uh, magazine where he's not mentioned in there somewhere, <laughs> you know, and it's just, you know, they love him He's and an the public loves him. He's kind of a, yeah, and I keep saying the word grassroots, mm -hmm. but that's actually what it is, right? He's a grassroots icon. That's where he came from and that's where he still lives. And 
I think that that's where he really, granted if somebody threw him the keys to like a prototype car or something like that, sure. there's no way he'd turn it down. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, he's right at home in this uh, grassroots arena and grid life has been perfect because it's like fun. Cool, yeah, yeah, I mean, it sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, new car, and we were we were planning on talking about <laughs> yeah the Integra, which you know that won't be the topic of this. <laughs> We've talked way too much about other <laughs> yeah, stuff. We have at this point. Yeah. But um, but side B, yeah. I guess side B, we should talk a little bit about the Integra. Yeah, we yeah. really set it up a little bit. We, I've I've been really curious about it because I'm seeing more and more photos. Mm -hmm. There was like a leak from China, I guess. Where so that's they had, the like, Chinese Integra. Sure, which I'm sure will be different. Yeah, but still, it's I was a rebadged like, Civic. Hmm. It's literally a rebadged Civic. Yeah. Well, isn't that so? This is something that I was going to kind of ask questions about because I haven't kept up, obviously, on like okay. accurate branding. This is great. Um, yeah. Well, we'll give it a second for the cool guy to go oh. by. All right. Okay. Now he's being cool over there. All right. Uh, so the so I know it started with the Integra was like the lowest model on the totem pole for Acura. For Acura. And then the RSX took its place. Yeah. And then I guess the ILX kind of took its place. Well, nobody would actually say that. R yeah. So because at the same time that they phased out the RSX, mm -hmm. the TSX was doing really strong. Yeah, which right? was kind of what the ILX. So the ILX kind of replaced. Became. Yeah, the ILX. But right. they came out in, um, you know, as the TSX was phasing away. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Twenty. Uh, 2015, and it's I want to say. And that was a 2.4, and the ILX is a 2.4, right? In, yeah. In most of its trims? Yeah. Yeah. The ILX, I think, was meant to be somewhat of a TSX replacement, mm -hmm. but as what commonly happens, you can just see the pattern over time, right? They make a car, it's really great, people love it, it's highly popular, all right, now we've got to redesign it and make it better than it was. Yeah. Which means it gets a little bit bigger. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, among a bunch of other things. The Civic is the classic example. Yeah, a Civic it's, now is bigger than an Accord yeah. used to be back in the 90s. And like the fit is more an analog to the original Civic. Yeah, that's than, right. Than the Civic is. But anymore. there's no room for it in our market anymore. Yeah. Like people want more substantial cars. Yeah. And that makes sense, but what happens is what was a really great TSX turns into another really great TSX, which is encroaching on what a TL was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the TL the creeps up. is a bigger, better car than it used to be, and uh -huh. now it's like, well, now that, that car is getting pretty big. Well, right? yeah, because there's still an RL as well, right? Well, there was at the time, yeah. Yeah, which is like, that was the biggest one, wasn't it? Well, it's like their flagship, so. Yeah. <laughs> Boy. You gotta live living next to a drag strip. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, um, yeah, the RL, it was kind of like the tech one that's uh -huh. got all the stuff on it. Generally is the biggest one. Yeah, footprint's um, the biggest, right? So what they decided to do at a certain point was merge, well, as far as what Acura called it, they merged together uh -huh. a TSX and a TL and made a TLX. Okay, and, so that's uh, where that is supposed to sit. The TLX the was supposed to do everything that those two other cars did. The okay. problem with the first generation TLX was that it was, you know, anything that tries to do too much, too, too, too many things, yeah. it's not good at any of them. Yeah. So it's like kind of understated, but it actually is boring, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got this 2.4 and a V6 power options, mm -hmm. which were both good powertrains, but nothing really interesting or exciting about either one of them. They're basically carryover engines from Honda. Yeah. Right? So now I have the SH all-wheel drive option, that's a good thing, mm -hmm. but only with automatic transmissions. They, you could only get that car with an automatic transmission. Yeah. So it didn't have like the sporting feel that the TL had, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, and beyond the fact that they did, they just it just didn't look like or seem like an exciting car at all. They yeah. came out with an A spec with the with the facelift. Yeah, which looked more aggressive. A spec but... looked way way better. Yeah, um, but. Still the same basic car on the inside, but at least it was something that people could get excited about. And I think that Acura just knew that they needed to redo, like, the TL, yeah. TLX completely. Reboot. And so the second generation one is, like, Leaks a ground-up design, yeah. it seems like. Completely yeah. new suspension layout. 
Much the, different design. Different engines, right? Because brand new uh, engine options. Which, which ones are there? I know you have the three liter single turbo yeah, twin scroll. That's and, right. And then there's a two. The standard engine is the two liter the turbo. Two liter. Which okay. is basically like again a, an Accord carryover engine, but it's also okay. in the yeah. RDX, and it's also in well uh, the souped up versions in the Civic Type R. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, the two liter um, TLX. It's no slouch of a car, mm -hmm. not at all. But then the Type S got the brand new Acura Specific three liter twin cam V6. Yeah, which is like all new. Right? Yeah. yeah. Which so, I think is like a really good play for Acura to like have completely redone the car. Like, no, no, we need to get rid of <laughs> yeah. this brand sharing and rebadging and like we need yeah. Our own bitchin' car, and that's what they what made. What we actually meant was blah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 It's, mm -hmm. like, so, it's like you were misheard at first. I think I, Acura is getting its identity back. Yeah. So, where do you think the Integra is going to sit in this field? Because uh, for me, at least, I'm like, well, it's um, based on the photos, it looks almost like an Accord or something. It's pretty large, well, I think, but. There are no photos yeah. of the actual <laughs> True. Integra. Um, Things are being leaked, but also things are being rendered by outside yeah, parties. Yeah. And that gets really slippery. It gets it really does, hard to discern. You know, like the Motor Trend one? Uh -huh. A really attractive looking, yeah. what, what looked like a two-door TLX, mm -hmm. and presumably a smaller version. Yeah. Really gorgeous looking car. Completely off the mark. They're not even making a two-door car. Yeah. At They're best, they would make a hatchback. But yeah. they are making that. It's a five-door, mm -hmm. right? Why is it a five-door? Because... That's what people are going to yeah, buy. Yeah, I mean, right now, that's what the market loves. They love yeah. crossovers and hatchbacks. And I did stuff. see one rendering that had it looking a little bit like a crossover, and I cringed a little bit. Yeah. Like, this is kind of a, it is a sportier looking one, but we don't, I definitely don't think we need like an X1. I just go to the, what, was it, what did they call it? The ZDX? Wasn't that it? The, the ZDX, yeah, that, that was. That one was uh, the Accord Cross Tour, but it was rebranded, right? Well, no. No, the ZDX was like, a, a coupe silhouette version of an MDX. So it was like a legit is SUV. Okay. Yeah, it is. It was supposed to be like you know BMW X5, mm -hmm. BMW X6. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had the MDX bag. and the ZDXL, a little bit more of a coupe yeah. version of an MDX. Well, That's which a higher style MDX is all it was supposed to be. Yeah. The Cross Tour is a lifted Accord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just pray though that it has the Integra has no physical resemblances to the ZDX because I thought it was a really ugly car. Yeah. <laughs> just you my know, opinion. Honestly, <laughs> they were always funky looking, but I've seen a couple more recently, and they. I think that time is doing them well. Okay. They're aging. Right. They're aging pretty well. I haven't seen one in a long time. Well, it's like the fourth fair. generation TL. Yeah. Butt ass ugly. Yeah. Few people yeah. bought them. Like mm -hmm. that was not a really popular car. <laughs> yeah. But actually, as you know, our car like mm -hmm. it actually holds up pretty well. Yeah. It's, and uh, it's got some know, nice angles. I think it, it's got its mark. Yeah. In uh, automotive history, yeah. so not not a problem. No, the Integra is going to be a five door. If you look at the. Uh, the previous, um, well, the old, so this is a funny thing. They're, they're talking about carrying on like Integra heritage, mm -hmm. right? With the only other five door they had was the first generation, yeah. 86 to 89. Yeah. Everything else was had a four door option, but it's yeah. a sedan. Yeah. Uh, so I would have personally rather seen a sedan. I just think that, and John Akata said this himself this is a volume model, right? They have to sell it. A ton of these things it has to appeal to the largest number, of and people. therefore yeah. it's going to have a hatchback, you know. And I think that that's and it's got to have four doors, mm -hmm. right? They're not competing with the GTI. Even the GTIs are all four doors now, aren't they? Really? I don't know. I'm not really sure. I'm not much of a VW guy, but I, I know for a long time they like had something a got phased option. out. I think they phased out the Golf three door. I haven't seen a three door in a long time. Yeah, so maybe I maybe you, you guys know. I don't know. I think you can get a Golf R or a GTI, but yeah. they're. <laughs> They, I, don't know. I don't know. Overwhelmingly, I see them in four doors these days. Bottom yeah. line is, people want four doors. <laughs> yeah. Coupes yeah. don't sell. And it was my personal hope that the change in the Civic lineup, mm -hmm. getting rid of the two-door model, was going to open the door for a two-door in the Acura yeah. lineup. That was, I, th I looked at that and I thought, well, maybe they could do, uh, an Acura can afford not to sell as many as Honda. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a poor selling car to a Honda is still probably pretty good to an Acura, yeah. you know, in terms it, of sales. Yeah, units. So uh, my hope was that it would be a two-door hatchback, mm -hmm. 
Now they're going mine five too. door. Yeah. yeah, mine too. I'm so sure most other people. The think. only two that I think that we can, um, the only two renderings that I think that we can go off is the two that Honda actually shared, which is the sneak of the eye or the headlight. Yeah, literally just the headlight with the Integra. And it says Integra. Yeah. It's got the the brand family chicane thing in it. It yeah. looks like a TLX, but different. And then the one where the sloping in the back mm -hmm. shows the the hatchback yeah. profile. It's pretty. Lopey looking. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this car is going to really look like, um, but yeah. you know, hopefully, I, I'm thinking it's probably going to have somewhat of a TLX proportion. Yeah. I'm thinking just a little smaller, maybe. Well, it'll be a smaller car uh -huh. than a TLX. Yeah. It's based on a Civic platform. Okay. So it it the TLX is its own platform. So footprint of a Civic, body of a TLX. Footprint kind of a of? Civic, and if you can imagine like the Civic hatchback, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. but more smoothed out. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay. because the Civic and the Civic hatchback. The hatchback there mm -hmm. is more of like, you know, the boxy kind where the yeah, whole back kind of opens up. Yeah. I'm anticipating more of a hatchback the way that the first gen Integra was, which was more Very of a lift swept. back. Yeah. Yeah. So rather than opening up out, mm -hmm. it opens up. Yeah. Honestly, like the Civic hatchbacks, I, I shopped for them for a while when I was looking for a commuter recently. I, on your photo, I could barely tell that it was a hatchback versus a sedan. The, the, the ten-strand ones. Yeah, like yeah. from the front and from most other sides, it's kind of like, is that, yeah. Is it a, well, I guess. And then you see the glass. Once they and put you go, like the okay. spoiler and stuff on them, then they start looking a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, they're more distinctive. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think that the. Um, what about, it, rather, they're calling it a hatchback, but I'm thinking it might end up being more of a lift back mm -hmm. or like come maybe partially down the back of the car, but not necessarily like swing the butt open like yeah. the, the Civic is. What about drivetrains? What do you think? It's definitely going to be a 1.5. And then so? I would assume a two liter option okay. for the Type S. But it's definitely going to be those two powertrains. It's, again, based on the Civic, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'm, I'm, Hopeful that your base engine is like an SI. Yeah, you yeah. know, 200 plus horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, the 11 gen Civic has got 200 horsepower. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm expecting it to have that powertrain. Maybe it will have a different power figure. Yeah. I don't know. They could come up with a different turbo setup for it, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? You know, yeah. or if they just honestly, if they made a Civic SI with the five door profile, because mm -hmm. the SI. The twenty, the it's the, only oh, sedan, right? It's only going to be in the sedan. Right. So if you want the more performance and you want the lift back, maybe you have to go to Acura. Okay. That. <laughs> so that's maybe was, and then they're going to have a Type S. They yeah. have to have a Type. They trademark the name. Even before that, I already knew John Akeda already said that there was going to be a Type S for every Acura. Yeah. And it only makes sense for that to be like a detuned two-liter car. So you're visualizing it to be a close analog to a Type R, but just smoother, quieter. Yeah, I mean, the Type R is, you know, definitely a car that you could daily drive. Yeah. You know, but it does have more track tuned suspension. Mm -hmm. It's got a pretty aggressive, you know, wheel and tire setup. Will we see Brembo brakes on it? I think we probably could. On the Type S, yeah. Well, I'm really, yeah. I'm really hopeful that a two liter Type S version will basically be a luxury version of the Type R mm -hmm. with the Integra body. Yeah. Right? Um, and, you know, maybe a little less power, maybe not. I, I don't know how much family arguing there has to be between a Type S and a Type R. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that was being pushed around. Everybody said, oh, no, there won't be any Type R Integra. There won't be, there won't be. And I thought, well, there's no real reason why there couldn't be. Yeah. They did an Integra Type R before, but recently talking to some people, it came clear to me that there's just no way they're going to do a Type yeah, R with an Acura brand. They're just not motivated to do that. Well, I, it's a brand thing. Yeah. You know, they're punching Type S so hard. That it would be off-brand. It would be actually yeah. be off-brand to yeah. do a Type R now. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. It's unfortunate because I think everybody's kind of like, whoa, Type R, you know? Like, whoa. I think that when they brought the Integra Type over and mm -hmm. Type R over in, in 97, yeah. that that was really just... Uh, a flyer. I don't think they really expected that to turn into anything. Yeah, they just had it around, and they were like, "Well, let's see what." It, well, I don't. I don't think they just had them around. They had to. They had I to mean, put they, energy into it. What but, I mean is, they developed it for other markets, and they were like, "Well, it's." Oh, well, they only developed it for Japan. Yeah, 
to be honest. I mean, and I, then they ended up in other places too, which were easy to get it to. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the Integra Type R was a really special car and um, we were fortunate to get it in any version. Yeah. But, you know, just the challenge of bringing a car like that to America, you know, I yeah. just, they're not going to have any like racetrack ready Type R's like that anymore, mm -hmm. I don't think. And even that car, it was still a road car. Yeah. You know? They were comfortable. I've driven a few of them. Yeah. And, yeah. It's still an Integra. It's mm -hmm. just the fundamentals of it were, you know, we can put the sound deadening. Oh, but that's not good for performance. And we <laughs> yeah. can sacrifice that in a Type R. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, sitting there with the scale going, mm, and they go, you get a lighter shift knob. We got the, uh, we got the GSR engine, which is much better than a B16, mm -hmm. but well, it would be better with this other head on it. Mm -hmm. And if we ported it out and made yeah. it a little bit better, you know, yeah. that will get the power up. Yeah. You know, because it's, you know, you want that in the track car, a little more power. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, yeah, definitely five door. We already knew this. Um, I think we, we know there's going to be a Type S. It's absolutely going to have a 1.5 and, and a two liter. My biggest wondering is, just the chassis, like the front suspension on the 10th gen Civics mm -hmm. was just a little bit different between the base, the SI, and the Type R. They're all a little bit different. Yeah. And so I'm wondering where are they gonna land like are they on the 11th gen and whatever they land on the 11th is gonna end up translating to the Integra too. Like okay. will the Integra get that really nice um, anti-torque steer front strut setup that the Type R has, Civic Type R has. Like standard? Yeah, yeah. like across the board or just a two liter. Uh, Acura isn't a volume brand, but they do want to sell these cars in volume. It would make sense that most of the platform would be the same across both versions. Well, I got a question for you then. Um, talking about drivetrain, what about all-wheel drive? Do you think that they're going to try? I don't and, believe so. No. You don't think they're going to have any model no, or trim of so. it? I don't think so at all. Hmm. And this is another thing that people are talking about. Oh, they're, oh it's going to be. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, it's no. not going to have it. Hmm. It's based on the Civic. The Civic is an all-wheel drive. Yeah. Well, yeah. And if it is based on the Civic, then I mean, plus it'd be a lot of extra listen, engineering. Listen, volume sure. model. What does that translate to? Yeah. We need to make money on these things. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can't have that expense. It's got to have better economy than the all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive system that Acura has is freaking amazing, mm -hmm. right? But it's heavy, it's complicated, and it's yeah, expensive. Yeah. All-wheel drive always kills gas mileage. It does, but yeah. this one kills it a lot. Does it? Well, yeah, because it's like the diff is like two diffs in one. Oh. And like... Is it like torque vectoring? Yeah, yeah. that's what oh, makes yeah, it yeah. so special. It's not yeah. just a little pumpkin thingy back there, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, it's actually it's taking the readings and it's like locking. Yeah, it's got two sets right. of clutch yeah. packs yeah. and it will overdrive the outside wheel to push the car around a turn. Yeah, and it works. It. That's yeah. what the TL type, TLX Type S. Mm -hmm. It really does work. Um, cool. But the car is 4,200 pounds. Yeah. You know, it's it's heavy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, uh, and it's expensive. So I think that the Integra is probably going to end up in the high 30s low 40s mm -hmm. for price, you know, depending on where you're at with trim. And it's going to get reasonably good mileage. It'll have good performance. It won't be some kind of like, yeah, junk. it won't be an asphalt burner, yeah. you know, but it will definitely hold its own. Um, and people are going to like it because of the name, but it's not going to be the Integra that we remember. Of course. Yeah. You know, you have to, uh, and I think we mentioned this at one point, right? They stopped making the RSX, which was effectively an Integra in 2006. Mm -hmm. yeah, We're 15 years in the future, yeah. 16 oh. years. It's so much farther. You could, have had, say that. you could have had a kid <laughs> when they stopped making yeah. the RSX, and that kid would be driving now, uh. potentially, a car that didn't even exist when they were uh, born, right? It like stopped existing when uh, they were born. I feel so, so old. I know. I'm it. like the RSX is still but when you a cool new car, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That was like a classic. Yeah, uh, Graham, I'm really sorry to tell you, man. Uh, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, oh no, you're salty yeah. up in here. Dude, I, I know. I know. I, I am too. My hair is lighter color. So I just shave, and that's my solution. <laughs> yeah, so anyhow, it's not going to be the Integra that we remember, because in that amount of time, how much would the Integra have evolved? Yeah, right. Look at what happened to the Civic. Yeah, definitely. You know, the EP3 mm -hmm. versus 
a 10th gen yeah. Civic hatchback, yeah. it's worlds different. Well, even, I mean, even the jump into my 8th gen when I had one, it was like, whoa, this is way more refined. It has this like speed yeah. sensing volume control, it's got subwoofer. And an 8th gen is sunroof, still somewhat like, of like a tinny car. Yeah. You know, the yeah, ninth by gen. By today's standards, yeah. The 10th gen is, is a much nicer car. Yeah. The 11th gen is, the interior design looks really nice. Yeah. Like, they've come a long way with these cars, mm -hmm. and so you're gonna have to forgive a lot of the damn, this Integra is kind of yeah. big, or damn, like, this doesn't even really look like an Integra. <laughs> yeah. Well, no crap. They brought back the name. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're, they're planning to bring back the spirit, it's which is, like a... this is a Civic, <laughs> but it's the one that you're, like, that you want to drive after you have a couple of bucks. Well, it's like a celebrity comeback. It's like when you haven't <laughs> seen somebody in like 15 years and you see them and you're like, oh shit, that's what they look like now? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But you know, you're right. You're right. I mean, the brand does have to evolve and it's because the buyers have grown up, you know? It's like, I have these, you know, these dreams in my head of all these cars that I used to love, you know, the, oh, the Miata and the, the original Integra yeah. and stuff like that. But if I were to try and buy one and drive it daily now, I know I'd be like, ah, yeah. oh, man, it doesn't have voice We've control. Been and it doesn't have yeah. cruise control. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have all this other shit that, like, yeah, that we're so used to now. It's, yeah. it's too small. It's got no noise reduction. Yada yada. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have any leg to stand on. But I'm like, I want it to be all wheel drive. I want it to have the two liter standard. Yeah. Like, I want it to be like a fucking firecracker. Well, that's my call, but, right? No, and I don't, I, know. I don't know. We we learn a little bit more every time. A little bit more is leaked, right? Yeah. We're yeah, supposed yeah. to that the next thing that we're supposed to see with these things mm -hmm. is after SEMA, I think it's, yeah, the week or something after like, SEMA, November something if after SEMA, there's going to be another leak, I think maybe a concept. Well, didn't they, they showed like a gear shift recently, didn't they? They did. Yeah. All so, they're trying to do is so show you that good. it's going to have a manual. Yeah. That's all that was intended to do. Which is nice, because right now, I mean, the TLX doesn't even have a manual no. option, right? What, no. what uh, Acura's do? None. Not even the NSX anymore? No, no, the it's NSX is all, du it's a dual shift. Oh yeah, because it's, yeah. uh, it's dual you know, clutch. Yeah, what is it, yeah. DMG or whatever, right? No, dual or, clutch, DCT. DCT, oh, yeah. thanks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the GTR, right? I believe yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, DC. Uh, yeah, dual clutch is the way to go for performance. Yeah, I've never, but I've never driven one, I don't think. They're I'm great. Sure. I'll bet. Yeah, yeah they're, they're really pretty great. Fun. Yeah, it's like the best. Cool. Well, yeah. um, why don't you guys tell us what you think the Integra is going to be like? Let's start betting. Oh, we already know. Right? They've already blabbed what they think and what they want. Well, not your viewers. The bottom line is, <laughs> is that nobody knows until Acura says. Sure. Of course. Of course. But it's fun to speculate, isn't it? Oh, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's It's funny. like wondering what you're going to get for Christmas. You, you know what? there and picture what's in the box. It's because... <laughs> I don't know. I don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. Well, I'm, sure. I'm too, you're a busy guy. I'm you're too. In, everybody's busy, but I'm just uh, in meeting your your race car drivers, <laughs> <laughs> and all of us have time on the internet to think about what this car is going to be like. Click away. Exactly. I'll be in the comments section going, "No, it's well, going to have it. a three liter. It's going to have the same engine yeah, as the this guy doesn't TLX know what he's Type about. S." Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. I'm excited to see what it is. And and I think... Uh, I am too. I think that it harkens a new age, hopefully, of enthusiasts, younger enthusiasts for Acura. Because I feel like that's kind of like, that's the issue that well, I see with car culture right now, is that these models have grown. They've grown yeah. into more adult cars. You know, they're expensive. Well, you know, like the it's, Civic, the Civic, the 10th gen, a lot of people got a 10th gen Civic. Yeah. And a lot, that car had a lot of performance potential. Yeah, it did. You know, and a lot, of, where are they going to go to? Yeah. Like, they're not going to jump to a TLX. They may not even yeah. want it because it doesn't have a stick. Exactly. They're not going to go necessarily into an Accord. It's almost the same car, yeah. you know, and yeah. getting a stick in that is really difficult to do. Mm-hmm. You know where are they? Where are they going to go? Yeah, right. So I think Acura has got to give them somewhere. Up. Yeah, like oh, you're done with your Civic, but you're not done having yeah. fun. Yeah, have this car, and that's that's I think exactly what an Integra is supposed to be—a graduation out of a Civic. Yeah, uh, a new platform to launch off of. Get them into the Acura brand. Yeah, and then use that to get them into a TLX mm -hmm. or an MDX yeah, or well, RDX if I they mean, need to grow. It can be really hard to transition from owning a luxury car to a non-luxury car again. You know, and that, okay, so you know, we're trying to wrap up, but <laughs> that's another thing that Acura is getting a lot of heat for not being 
for being a luxury brand that isn't very luxury. Oh, really? Like, yeah, exactly. And yeah. I think that um, to some people's fair point, like Acura's pounded away luxury performance, luxury performance so much. Mm -hmm. But when they're at their best, they're not really building performance cars or luxury cars. They're building really, really good Hondas. Yeah. You know, and I think I think that that's the direction that they're going in right now, which mm -hmm. is exactly the right direction. But they won't get anybody's attention if they don't have this performance luxury component. Mm -hmm. The only thing that makes an Acura luxury, really, is that it's like got better materials inside and well, a little bit more standard features. But yeah, most of the cool features. If the most of the features that you get in a TLX, you can get in an Accord. Sure. It's not. That, I guess that's true. Yeah. It's not that the features are that great. It's the powertrain that makes it better. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the styling that makes it better. It's got a more focused appeal, and inherently, it's more of a, a luxury car in that sense. Oh, yeah, it's got the leather. It's got heated whatever this, you mm. know, it's got all this baloney that a luxury car has. Yeah. But comparing it to an Audi. Well, sure. It's not. Comparing it to a BMW, there's a brand cachet that comes along with those cars. The design that comes from Europe mm -hmm. is inherently more luxurious than anything that comes from Japan. Yeah, it tends to be pretty opulent. Yeah, or just cutting edge, mm -hmm. or just a little bit more like, I had to sacrifice to get this yeah. kind of thing, right? Or I've made it, right? Status. Symbol. You don't yeah. get that with an Acura, and I think that that's perfectly fine, mm -hmm. you know, but it, you've got to compare it to all these other cars. Even Acura themselves has to compare it because it's a marketplace. Yeah. The thing is, is we make really great Hondas here, the ones that even Honda can't build, mm -hmm. isn't going to sell the Acura. Yeah. They've got to draw people in, and so they've got the cool design now, right? They've got plenty of features. They've got a dedicated platform and powertrain with the TLX. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got the Integra coming, which is a legendary name. So yeah. excited to have an actual word back for a name of a car instead <laughs> yeah. of letters. Yeah. You know, the Integra, more than anything, is to get people to go to Acura dealers. Mm -hmm. More than anything, right? The, just the NSX curious. is gone. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to draw in a whole bunch of people that just want to see an Integra. Mm -hmm. They may go away with an RDX. Yeah. That, 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 listen, guys, that's what this is all about. It's about selling cars. It's not True. about necessarily making us all happy. It's about tantalizing us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they want to make a car that makes us happy. They want us to buy the car and love it. Sure. But before we can do that, we have to show up. Yeah. And that's what this car is designed to do. It's designed to get us into the dealership and then want to buy it after we see it or buy something else from that brand. It works, it's and that's, you know, they just haven't been doing it, and now they are, and I think it's really great. It's the free beer to the uh, cheap beer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. We beat it. We beat it. We uh, I think, yes. you know, I'm not going to speculate it. anymore. It's got to be a record. It's going to be like an hour long. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Really? <laughs> Something right. like that. Hey, yeah. listen, maybe people are interested. We have to put maybe. these things out. We do. I don't know. Yeah. And it's a good chance. I'm to, glad that we got chat. a chance to talk yeah. about GLTC. Yeah, yeah. Our sponsored drivers. It's off season now, so we'll see what comes up with those cars over time. Um, you know, new Integra, more to come, right? Yeah. We got SEMA coming up in a couple of weeks. I'll be there for that. Um, and then pretty much, uh, well, early December, Thunder Hill 25 hour, I'll be at that race with Tom and the uh, Honda Research team cool um they're going to be uh, racing uh 11th gen civic si nice so get to check that thing out up close and maybe even help them out a little bit 24 oh, 25 hours yeah. is a long that time a to long be standing around in a paddock so yes it is we'll see yeah, gotta limber up yeah cool. we may do another one before then hopefully this comes out before then yeah and yeah. then uh yeah that's it yeah. cool well thanks for joining us guys uh i don't know if you've got any comments or thoughts on the integra or uh if you want to Take a moment and look up some of his uh, sponsored race car drivers. I'm sure that it would be worth your time. I'm curious myself, personally. Yeah, no, they're both on Insta. Yeah, cool. Good pictures, so. Well, All right, Graham. Yeah, let's thanks. Let's call it. Thanks for joining us, guys. Bye.